XCPNG server. This is a talk I've done in a couple open source events. I wanted to follow up and make a YouTube video for those of you that couldn't make it to the event and for all the people on YouTube that may have an interest in this. This is not a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to set up Zen server. I have that video already and I will link to it. This is the big picture view, overview of the functionality and history behind XCPNG. And so it's a good video if you want to understand some of the functional systems of how it works and features uh, without just jumping into an install. So let's get started. So first thing we have to do is separate Zen from XCPG and G server or from Citrix. Zen is a virtualization system supporting both pair virtualization and hardware assist full virtualization. Name stems from Next Generation Virtualization, initially created by University of Cambridge Computer Laboratory under open source GPL2 license. And it still exists. Zen is the hypervisor portion of this, much way that the Linux kernel is in many distributions for Linux, the Zen hypervisor is by itself the hypervisor, but the spin that we, I'm speaking of today is XCPNG, and I'll be talking a little bit about Citrix as well. Those are basically package feature complete, uh, well, almost feature complete when it comes to Citrix, the Zen project being wrapped in and turned into a easier to use product. Now, I pulled up a couple companies that are still using Zen Server. You might have heard of Orion VM or maybe those Amazon folks. Uh, EC2 used Zen virtualization exclusively. However, in November 6, 2017, Amazon announced a new C5 family of instances that were based on a custom architecture around the KVM hypervisor called Nitro. So there's always been some debate about this that some people said they're moving away from Zen Server. Maybe, I don't know. Um, I know that they announced this, They, but for the most part, only the C5 family, which is not the largest part of the EC2 system. So that kind of makes Zen pretty huge. Now, I'm not talking about XCPNG or Citrix Zen server. I'm talking about the Zen server open source project. Uh, Orion VM, I believe, still uses it. They're another big uh, solution provider that's based on that. And like I said, these are not, these are running their own custom versions of it for, well, obvious reasons. When you do it at the scale Amazon does, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to load this on all these servers and try to manage it. That can be a little tricky at the scale Amazon operates. So I'm sure they have a lot of customization that went in and same with the folks over at Orion. And there's, I'm sure there's a lot of other companies that are using this. The history of XCP starts with Citrix. Citrix has been a long time popular distributor of the Zen server software. Citrix's implementation uh, was kind of a hybrid. So you paid for support, uh, got it for free, paid for support, and some of the extra features had a license fee attached to it. And then all of a sudden, Citrix made a change. Well, a change as in an update. So on December of 2017, they went ahead and updated to 7.3, but they just took out features and said, oh yeah, by the way, you need a license. So a lot of people updated and seen the fixes, but didn't realize that the patches in there also included removing features that they would then hit you for a license fee to turn on. So this didn't set well with the uh, Zen community. And it's not like you can just rip everything out once you're in the Zen server market. Uh, to switch over to a different hypervisor because it's a lot of work and you've probably got a lot of tooling built around this. And, you know, so it was a big shock to the market. And my guess is Citrix thought they could just milk the market going, hey, how do we make more money? Just start charging for stuff that we weren't charging and add license fees to stuff that didn't have license fees before. So uh, that didn't go well with things. So these folks over at XCPNG, who are the same people that have Zen Orchestra, so they started the cloud project, the XCP uh, Zen Cloud Project new generation will offer an alternative to Citrix Zen server. And it didn't take time at all for them to go from their 6,000, um, a 6,000 euro goal to end up with 38,000. So they actually got overfunded on this. There was a lot of excitement, I, myself included, because I was a Citrix Zen user and so were some of my clients. And their product goes right over the top, including having all your VMs, all your settings copied right over because, well, they based off the same source code. So it, the, it was very pain free to just upgrade again from Citrix upgrade to a open source upgrade. XCPNG is usable from the sources very easily. We're continuously improving upgrade the update process to make it even more turnkey now using YUM. This is one of the departures that make it different from the Citrix Zen server. They actually have YUM updates built in. So I definitely think that's kind of cool. Citrix has only their patch system. Uh, that was, this is where they start to depart. For the most part, if you've seen all the Citrix features, they're 
they're going to be the same except for these ones here, which more features are being added. So XCP and Jalox nearly all the features is in commercial. Zen Server Commercial Edition for free. And this is where Citrix has licenses for different things like Zen Motion, um, being able to move VMs and dynamic memory. All that's just included with the XCPNG version. So XCPNG has gathered a real community of users and developers committed to its success long term. It really has. Spend any time in their forums. Their developers answer questions are really on top of things. Uh, feature changes and stuff like that have been coming really fast. So it's added so much more now and it's hard to cover everything but basically they've added more file system support than Citrix ever did. Uh, they've added a lot of features that are kind of neat uh, especially for some of the home lab people so it's starting to gain traction there in the home lab because they're supporting ZFS or supporting some of these other things that people wanted that Citrix never did. Plus you get all full features for free under open source. Uh, GPL license. Now, XCPNG has pro support for production environments. Support is the only thing you'll ever pay for. We only provide support, no license keys. This is kind of neat. So you have XCPNG.org where you get everything uh, downloadable for free with full feature sets enabled, or you can go to XCPNG.com and that allows you to buy support packages to help you set things up because a lot of us get busy if you're not familiar or you don't you do this every day. You have a, a virtualization stack that you just want to really focus on supporting it. If you're uh, a lonely IT guy or just don't have enough time to really dig into it, you can just buy support packages very reasonably from them as a .com. So that's their business model. And this works the same way for there's an orchestra product, which we'll talk about later, and their XCPNG product. So they do have paid support, but there's no license fees for it, which is really nice. Uh, I love things that are open source. I don't mind paying, and I have no problem buying and paying for support products. Um, I like the fact that there's not a license. I don't have to go activate some license server that may or may not um, change features on me as they see fit and like Citrix did. So this is all GPL licensed. Now all this only came about earlier here in 2018, uh, but here we are in November of 2018 and this is their website. They've uh, gone through a couple of revisions and cleaned up the logo and it's uh, really slick. Everything's on GitHub first. Everything's developed in the open on GitHub, which I love. So you can interact with the developers, you can see what's going on, you can see what features are coming, you can try out the betas. Um, 4,000 plus forum posts, uh, 800 forum contributors. It, it's grown and really pulled away from uh, into a community that's very helpful, that has a lot of people talking about very large-scale deployments and how they're using it, and it's been pretty impressive. So this project, uh, if the Kickstarter wasn't proof enough, it's certainly proof in the fact that the activity in the forums and number of people downloading is, especially because it goes right over the top. So if you're already a Citrix uh, Zen server user, it goes right over the top and brings in all your settings. So this becomes very turnkey to uh, deploy and replace, and it's been a great project. Now they have a couple slides on their website to compare XCPNG versus VMware. And the reason to compare it to VMware is because as far as features go, picture XCPNG is the full featured Citrix version. So, but a lot of companies in the enterprise market, as we know, VMware is the big guy on campus here. So VMware is supports web council man, basic VM, live VM migration, live VDI migration, high availability. XCPNG supports all of these, except for the web council, which is actually done by Zen Orchestra. And we're gonna talk about that more later, but Zen Orchestra is a VM that you can run within XCPNG, and that gives you the web interface uh, to manage all the systems. And we'll, like, so we'll be covering that. Now, a few more comparisons. Council view, you get that on all of them, XCPNG with, via their uh, Zen Center tools, and Orchestra has it. Uh, Hyperconversions, they have vSAN, XOSAN. I believe XOSAN is a licensed uh, add-on altogether. It's a separate product uh, outside of this. So XOSAN goes in on top of Zen Orchestra again. Um, tool updates, that's all supported. Automatic updates, you can do that through Zen Orchestra, which is kind of cool. So you can automatically patch the servers and update to the latest version. Once again, it's using Yum in the background there. Uh, thin provisioning is supported on both of these, both VMware and XCPNG. Now, added enhanced features are also Docker. Now, the Docker, I'm not much of an expert on. It's not my core uh, function that I do. So 
I can't speak a lot to actually managing it, but there are people who are using Docker. Uh, they're based around core OS. So if you load core OS, load Docker, it can be managed on XCPNG server with Zen Orchestra. And it does support things like some of the cloud init settings and cloud configs can be pushed to it. I'm not an expert on this, so I'm not gonna spend much time on it, but I do know it's supported and there is some documentation on that. Now, this is the Zen hypervisor architecture. So here's the hardware layer. So you have your, uh, your drive, your network cards, your VGA, your hardware, your processor, your memory, and then you have everything in domain zero, which is frequently just called DOM zero. So the Zen hypervisor loads and is a small piece on the hardware itself, and then everything else becomes a DOM zero or DOM U guest. So all the DOM U's are all the hosted VMs that are on top of it. You don't really wanna load things here in domain zero. Yes, you can hack away and load all kinds of things into it, uh, but ideally it's supposed to be kept very small, very clean, because it's just the basis that controls all the guests that are on top of it. And if you start loading things into DOM zero, it is a standard Linux, you can get to the command line uh, OS, but you wanna be careful what you set up and do on there because you don't want to have some instabilities at the base level. Generally, you load everything as a guest because people have asked me, can I load uh, Zen Orchestra? You could load anything in here. I, I don't really recommend it though because you'll end up with some uh, weird issues because it's unexpected uh, for the way the update process works. Everything's supposed to run as, either as a pair virtualization guest or a hardware virtualization guest. Now, pair virtualization versus full virtualization, both are supported in Zen Server. Zen Server has been supported in the Linux kernel since I believe version three, so for a very long time. And what this allows you to do is you can have Windows and all your standard full binary translation guest OSs over here. So you can run BSD, you can run Windows, you can run everything else as a full virtualization. You can run Linux as full virtualization. If you're looking for something lighter weight, you can have a pair virtualization, which means ring zero is still Zen, but then ring one has a control plane that communicate in DOM zero with the guest OS. So it's a lighter weight way to de do deployments and they both are supported provided you have things configured properly. But for those of you wondering about this, it is built in and it is supported uh, for both XCPNG and Zen server. It's all part of the project. As long as you're running similar, when you run pair virtualization, you need to run a, a host and guest OS that have to have similar uh, kernels to be able to talk, hence being built into the Linux kernel. Now let's talk about a Zen server host. So we have the host itself, and then we have local storage, ISO storage, directed hatch storage. One single host can completely run autonomously and run all of your systems, your VMs and everything on a local storage pool. So it does not have to have any other resources. You can have it booted and have a RAID array inside of it, either software RAID, which is supported in XCPNG server, um, or however you wanna configure your storage or direct attached storage, such as iSCSI or NFS are both supported. But when you want to pool resources together, you need two or more. Now, the way it's termed a lot of times is it is always considered a pool, even if there's only one, you just only have one host in a pool. But as you add more hosts in a pool, you may not want to use the local storage in that pool, you could use a shared storage. And when you have three or more, that's when you can get high availability. So you put the VM, the VDI on a shared storage pool, and then it can fail over to any one of these in here based on the parameters you set up for the high availability. It also adds the availability to very fast. Instead of just Zen motion where you're passing a VM between systems, you can quickly start them and just move it over here. So if the shared pool is here, the VDI stays in the same place and you can just pass it to other servers. This makes it really convenient when you wanna update hosts, you can do rolling updates by just shuffling all the VMs over to other hosts. When they're all in a shared pool, they shuffle in a matter, even on my uh, slower systems I have that are a little bit older, less than 30 seconds to move a Linux VM from one to the other, provided that they both have a common shared storage pool. Now you can still do Zen Motion and move live VMs between each other without them being in a resource pool. So the Zen Motion, this is um, not with a shared resource, pool, this is just when you want to one move an entire VHD to another Zen server. It can be in the same pool. If you're moving between local storage, it can be completely separate machines as long as they're networked in a way that they can talk to each other. So Zen Motion allows you to take the virtual machine and go from one server to another in the same pool, in a different pool, or when you're migrating and building it from pool to pool. There's a lot of different options there. Um, this is a Citrix slide because 
uh, just so you know, the features that you find in Citrix are pretty much in parity. The difference is Citrix charges a license fee for this versus XEPNG. This is just a free feature that comes with it. And full snapshotting is supported. So there's a couple different ways to snapshot. This snapshot is uh, being done in Zen Orchestra, so it allows you to create snapshots of the VM. So, you know, a, a slice in time, uh, both live or offline, however they are, and allow you to then download those snapshots, export them, or create new VMs from them. And it supports advanced coalescing. So Zen Server includes the ability to collapse VDI chains to eliminate redundant nodes that result from the creation deletion of snapshots. This process knows coalescing and occurs in a background process. And it's kind of interesting how it does it. And from the surface, you see things happening very fast. In the background, they can coalesce back into each other. So you can immediately get the result you want of forking a VM and starting it. And then it will take care of in the background um, as needed, the coalescing of all the data back, either merging it back into um, one VDI file or uh, keeping those all separate because you've spun different uh, VMs up off of snapshots. Now the install, pretty straightforward. Grab the ISO. Uh, you can use DD or whatever tool you want to use like Etcher and all these other ones out there to copy it to a thumb drive and make it bootable or an ISO if you want to boot it off of a CD if you still have one of those. They also have a net install option uh, that's a little bit thinner that will grab sources uh, and download them, but the download's not very big anyways. Then the web UI. Now, this is kind of neat. This is the Zen Orchestra. Zen Orchestra runs as a VM on top, and it's the web UI to manage one or many uh, Zen servers. So you only ever have to load one instance of this VM, and you can manage hundreds or thousands, I don't know what the upper limit is, you can manage a whole lot of Zen servers with one web interface and time all together. We're going to cover that details of that later. Uh, and they have a really quick deploy because of the power of the command line, because each one is a Linux, each Zen server as you load it uh, is running Linux. You can just run this bash command and curl and it grabs a deployment tool that scripts the downloading and setting up of the VM. It's an easy way to do it. Um, of course, I if you're an administrator, you always know the dangers of grabbing and pulling things just off the internet um, that execute <laughs> at root level, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, the installer looks like any other Windows installer. Choose the language, choose the hard drive, and this is one of the ways they departed again on the installer from the folks over at Citrix because now they added RAID support in here. Uh, it's software RAID because maybe you want your boot device to be uh, RAIDed together. Now, when you're setting up Zen Server, it does not require a large boot device. So you may want to use just a small couple uh, SSDs. It doesn't really have to be anything incredibly good other than solid for reliability, but you also may want to mirror it. That way your boot device isn't the weak point in here. That way you can separate out the drives that are for your boot device and versus your RAID. And you can load this on thumb drives or whichever method you want, um, however it works for you. But it does support rating them together, so at least you have some mirrored on there. Or if you have a server that supports hardware RAID, you could do it that way and just present the hard drive to uh, Zen Server for the install. Now, first you have the RAID setup, and, and we chose RAID on this option. But once you have it installed, the second part is it uses the rest of the hard drive. Uh, you can set up for either LVM or EXT for file formats for thick provisioning or thin provisioning. Set your network settings, automatic through DHCP or static address or VLAN, uh, supported right out of the box through the installer. And when you have it all installed, this is the end result of what it looks like. There's a handful of things you can do on here. It's menu-driven, network management interface, authentication, virtual machine. You can start and stop them. Uh, show the repositories, resource pool configuration, whether you want to join or leave a resource pool. So from the command line, you can get a few things done here. It's not real extensive. Um, well, from this menu-driven display, what is extensive is the actual command line. So if you wanted to completely manage this from the command line or script this, and this is how places like Amazon are handling it, um, there are a ton of utilities all from the command line that handles all the VMs. So they can be mishmashed and moved and destroyed and added and modified all from the command line. And then you can, of course, script this into a series of bash scripts to do things uh, for you. So very flexible. There's some GitHub scripts out there uh, for doing all kinds of behind the scenes stuff. We're mostly gonna talk about using the interface on top of here. As cool as all this is, this is the very advanced way to do this. Um, and if you're building this, of course, uh, for something like a large scale, deployment like Amazon or any larger uh, hosting company may do, you may want to write your own scripts for stuff, but it's option. It's there. I just want to point that out. Then we have Zentop is one of the neat utilities. I figured I'd show you real quick. Uh, so you can do some diagnosing and look at 
VM usage and things like that. You can do this all from the command line. So it is kind of novel. I do like all the power that they leave you with the command line. So if you have some advanced use cases or scripting you want to do, that is the ability to do that and you know see how things are going. You can operate this this way. Most people are going to choose either Zen Orchestra or we're going to start with Zen Center. Now my first gripe about Zen Center is it runs in Windows. I know they're trying to, uh, I think there's some people working on porting it over and getting it working in Wine. I haven't tested it or really followed up on that because I use Zen Orchestra for all of my management of my Zen servers. So the XCPNG Center is pretty full featured for managing Zen server. Uh, I don't have these in a pool, so they show up two separate. If you join them all into a resource pool that's supported, then all these uh, storage becomes shared between them, as long as it's a shared ability to share storage resource, uh, such as NFS or iSCSI. Uh, but we're gonna cover this as separate uh, storage pools for this demo. Here you can see um, the server itself, Server uptime, two days, 20 hours, uh, management interfaces, all of them just classable, expandable. It goes into and digs through all the details on there. You can see all the memory usage between all the VMs. And like I said, we're looking at this from the high level of the individual Zen server itself. Uh, it also has the ability to edit memory on the fly, and it will automatically restart the VM as needed to change the amount of memory you have allocated, but it also provides you have the Zen tools loaded, which come free with this on, the, on an ISO that you can load into the VM. Um, you can do a minimum, maximum memory, and what that does is allows you to over allocate memory. So if you set up for 768, but it only needs 512, it, when it's only using 512, it can then allocate that back into the pool. Uh, you can get in trouble over allocating memory, but it's cool, it's there. Now there's networking versus NIC. And what the NICs are is the physical part. Networking is the software layer of this where you can create VLANs, you can create what I have here. So it says LAN of Zen, Tom's LAN of Zen. You notice how it's not tied to a NIC, these first couple of them here. What that means is I can create virtual networks, attach them to the machines, but they don't exist outside of the pool, outside of this particular server. And this allows you to create two VMs on the same machine and create like a bridge between them. So I would take a, for example, when I do my firewall demos, I will create the WAN of the firewall, tie it to the LAN, then I'll create the LAN of the firewall and tie it to a host only adapter and then tie other virtual machines. So that same named like LAN of Zen, host only adapter. By doing that, this allows me to have an independent internal only network that doesn't access via any of the physical network cards and share resources within there. Great for doing uh, lab tests or demo tests or when you're taking stuff apart because you want to understand how something works and you don't want any outside network interference and you want it to pass all through a specific firewall with no noise on the line. These are neat ways you can do that. It also has, uh, down here at the bottom, this is where you set your management and storage NICs. So I have uh, some 10 gig cards in my machine, and that's how it attaches to a network I called storage 10 gig. And then you can assign the IP addresses and everything else from here. So these are the same ones you can control from the original when you load it. So you set where the management is, you set where the Zen server uh, storage devices are. And that's separate because these are not part of what shows up to the VMs. Now this auto yes and no are options that we'll cover later, but I just want to point them out here. These are the automatic, when you're creating a VM, it just automatically adds those to it. Now here is the NIC 145. It kind of looks out of order because we have them set up. Um, this is showing the physical side of the networks. So I tie them together when I create the networking together, I tie it to these physical network cards, just listing, uh, listing here what PCI bus path they are. It also has fiber channel capabilities, the send server does. I don't have a fiber channel in my system. Uh, it also supports SR-IOV. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to pass the network card through the PCI bus to the individual VMs. Uh, none of the cards I have currently have that support, but it is a feature built into Zen server. Here's the console. Once again, I'm looking at the same console that you would see if you were at the machine plugged into the VGA cable itself. VGA, HDMI, however you're hooking up to the machine. When you're looking at the top level view, here's the performance meter. So we can look at it and we can see all the CPU usage that's going on um, and how it's spiking and how it's working. Then we have here uh, Debian 9 demo, which is one of the VMs that's running under here. So general kind of looks the same as it did right here. So the menus kind of repeat themselves, memory storage, networking, but it's focused down to only this VM. So I can look at the console for this particular VM because it, it has the tools loaded, it's aware that SSH is on the server and it hits the option to launch SSH because it's in Windows, it automatically launches PuTTY. Here's what a Windows server and the 
looks like here. It's got the option to turn on remote desktop if it recognizes that RDP is enabled on that particular server. Um, so you can just open up into a standard RDP session launched from Windows, or you can use it from the console here. Um, and I was just doing some rewrite tests in here, passing hard drives through sequential write tests. It actually writes pretty fast. I haven't really had any performance issues with this because I don't have a ton of detail when it comes to performance testing, but it does seem to perform very, very fast uh, for all the VMs that we have running on here and between the hard drives and everything else. And you can always look at what is chewing it up. So we looked at the high view here of the virtualization server itself. This is the individual VM and what processors this VM is using or hard drive or uh, memory or network performance that is running. And you can then see the VM lifecycle reports and this zoom allows me to zoom out between different time frames uh, when I'm looking at this. Here's what the snapshotting looks like inside of here and I like the way they do this for forking. So what I mean by forking is you can have it here how it's running now, roll back to the snapshot and roll back to either one in either way. So you're creating paths essentially. So you're not just snapshotting it, you roll back to another snapshot, but then snapshot again. It'll track all that and fork all these out as it does it. So it's kind of neat. Um, it also supports reverting to snapshot, new VM from snapshot, save as a template. If you have the VM set up perfect, you're like, oh, this is the perfect VM, I wanna build it as a template, you can just build this as a template. That way you can redeploy it when you're deploying VMs. So you deploy from this template that I made. So I do this when I have my uh, Debian 9 demo. We have it all configured the way we want, like with the general tools that I want set up, so I don't have to go through trouble reloading it. And you can build that as a template as opposed to loading it from an ISO each time when you create VMs. And when you change views here, I move to object view versus infrastructure view. There's actually search functions, and I just don't have that many VMs to make it look really cool. But uh, some of the people running this in production have like over a thousand VMs running. Being able to search, create tag searches, and uh, tag all these VMs with descriptions, you can then go through and find and save all these searches so it will display everything out. Um, it's also telling you when the XCPNG tools are not installed. I don't have them installed in my free PBX box. I keep it just kind of light uh, without them. It works fine if you don't install the tools, but it just lets you know when you're going through here because it can't see inside of uh, the drives to look at some of those details. When you're creating a new VM, if you have a template that you built, it will show up in here with all the settings, but these other templates don't automatically load Linux for you. They have a whole lot of Linux templates, Windows templates, um, but it doesn't load Windows for you. You still have to pop in the ISO unless it's a template you built with a storage piece attached to it. So when you're going through and building the VMs, it's gonna ask you for the installation media. And this is back to, if you remember when it said ISO library is one of the storage resources, basically you pointed out these are an SMB and NFS, however, the external share or local, um, it will pull from the drive inside of there. So you can put a CD if you have a DVD drive in your Zen server itself, you can have the tools which is the guest ISO tools you'll layer. And all the ISO stuff is actually the name of my storage repository where I have just a bunch of ISOs they pointed at there. And you can even create a new ISO library. So you have to have it stored somewhere. Samba share works perfectly fine. And it just finds all the different ISOs you have on that share and allows them to be loaded into the virtual machine. Then CPU and memory, we have the option for uh, 24 vCPUs. For some reason, it will let you over allocate more than you have that probably creates all kinds of problems. I believe it gives you a warning when you do that. Uh, then topology, uh, 12 sockets with two CPU per socket. You can do like two sockets, 12 cores for sockets or 12 sockets with two cores. This sometimes comes down to the way you want your VM to see things or maybe a requirement for licensing you have with the VM you have uh, running because some software licenses by socket versus by core. Storage, by default, it wants to just add to the default storage pool, um, but you can add multiple virtual disks and whichever storage pool is attached, it'll let you do it, whether it be a local one. Uh, we have two different free NAS servers we have attached to ours so we can choose either one. One's just called FreeNAS and one's called Dozer. Virtual interfaces, these are those auto ones. By default, it just auto adds these two, but we can add more like the second LAN of Zen and we can even force a MAC address if we wanted and some QoS information here. So if we wanted to come up with, you have a MAC address already assigned because you have it in your DHCP pool, you can do all that and generate those on, in, on here and put them in as opposed to letting it auto-generate. Now let's talk about Zen Orchestra. Now Zen Orchestra is same 
developers that are making XCPNG server. So this is a turnkey solution for Zen server and XCPNG. And they were, like I said, they built this and it worked with Citrix. And when Citrix started changing things, that's when they came up with the XCPNG and then loading Zen Orchestra on there. They have a very similar model. All the source code is free for you to compile, but if you want their pre-compiled versions and support, well, they have pricing for that. So there's a few feature differences when you get the free version uh, from them. It auto updates and it's nice, uh, but it does have a couple features missing. Their pricing is pretty reasonable for paid support. And like I said, you only need one instance of Zen Orchestra to manage many, many Zen servers themselves. Now, there's also, if you just want to compile it yourself, like I said, for free, you don't get any, you know, uh, paid support, but you just want to compile it. I'll leave a link here to the Zen Orchestra Installer Updater. It is a turnkey tool to take a VM that has just like a basic, uh, I load, I do mine in Debian. So a basic Debian load, you run this and it deploys either a Docker image or builds it and compiles it from the sources, which takes a little while, depending on the speed of your machine, but will build Zen Orchestra for yourself. So if you're doing this at home, you're playing with home lab or you just want to try out all the features um, before you buy it all you can download all the code and uh, mess around and play with it yourself and compile it and this tool makes it handy now once you open up Zen Orchestra because it's a web interface then you have to attach it it's not aware of that it's running in Zen server so it doesn't auto attach to anything you have to put in the password so Zenifer, Zenifer 2, two separate servers um, I actually had a third demo server that's disconnected right now and you can just click connect and disconnect and add them remove them as needed uh, just type in IP address username password unauthorized certificate Zen communicates over port 443 and by default has a self-signed cert so you just check unsigned cert unless you've added your own cert. That's a more advanced tutorial. We're not really gonna cover all that today. This will allow also the read only of Zen server. So you can actually attach one of them any read only fashion. That way you can't make any changes, but could then pull all the information from there. And like I said, you connect as many as you want in here. So this one Zen orchestra instance can control all your different Zen servers provided. It has the ability to talk to them over the network. Now, once in here, you have the ability to see um, all the Zen servers. It defaults to power state running. These are all the different VMs that are running inside of Zen server and you have little mouse over options to start and stop them and you can click on each one and drill down into more detail. So this pretty much all the features you've seen in XCP uh, Zen Center software is also available in Zen Orchestra. For the most part, they're feature parity. Uh, there's a few more advanced features we're going to cover here that Zen Orchestra has on top of, so it extends some capability. But for the most part, it has all the functionality you'll find inside of there that was in the Zen Center server. We call Zen Center software we covered first. So then we have filter options, and I just changed it to filtering none. So now we see even the non-running ones. It does support looking up the tags like lab test machines. I have that tagged. Any VM, both in Zen Center and in from the command line or from Zen Orchestra supports adding and removing tags from it. Uh, it makes it easier to find things when you start having lots and lots of VMs uh, so you can hunt them down and figure out which one's which. And the tags can also be used for functions. I went ahead and chose like eight X, uh, eight different VMs here. So I just chose lab test machines. And then from here, I can go to these options up here. One of them is migrate VMs. And this is just a quick way if I wanna grab a bunch of them, migrate them somewhere. It can migrate them between any Zen server you have connected, whether they're in a pool together or not, it doesn't really care. And this is kind of a nice thing. You don't really need to deal with any of the pools um, or managing the pools because you can just say each server is gonna be individual as an orchestra will manage them. I'm not using any shared storage between them. And then you can do live motion and migrate these online, offline between the different servers. Um, no problem at all and clone them and move them. Now, each server, even though it's alone, is considered a pool. So it says there's two pools, even though there's two hosts divided out, there's only one host in each pool. There's 19 VMs across uh, storage. This is, you know, kind of a dashboard view. Now, you don't get the fancy dashboard view when you have the non-compiled version. This is the version I compiled uh, versus their free version. Uh, you lose some of the stats, pages, and things like that inside of here, but I wanted to cover that they had it here. It's both in the paid version and the self-compiled version with no support. And it reminds you when you do no compiling, when you compile it yourself, that there's no support over here. Now let's take a look here at an individual server. We can see that there's a patch needed because yes, it supports doing the patches right through the web interface. Like I said, this makes it really handy and it works over low bandwidth, by the way. So if you are running Zen Orchestra and your Zen server is somewhere else, you can run this and it will communicate over um, the internet to Zen Orchestra to a 
uh, further away one. But of course, you may not want to try and move VMs across that because, well, that becomes a whole different issue. But yes, it does work over that, but it does easily allow you to load patches on them as well. Uh, this is an enhanced feature that Zen Orchestra supports uh, with the XCPNG server. You can see the stats pages, the CPU usage, memory usage, network throughput, uh, through throughput, I say that word wrong sometimes, uh, load averages on the server. You can look at the health of the server, and what it does is it shows you like the ORF and VDIs, VDIs attached to control domain. What these are is, for example, if you started a snapshot, you started the snapshot, maybe it failed during a snapshot, or uh, you broke the VM or deleted the VM, but not the snapshots that went with it, you'll end up with ORF and VDIs, and this can help you find them and clean them up, because uh, they're just taking up space, but they're not attached to a VM anymore. Um, or you can always reattach them, but either way, you could at least start finding them here when you're looking at the storage pools. Then we have the Debian 9 uh, demo one here, and it's the same thing, we, just like it was in Zen Center software. We can see the uh, CPU usage, memory usage, network uh, distro puts. So this is looking at individual VM versus the whole uh, server itself in the Zen server. Uh, this is what the console looks like. So right here we have the same thing that we had is actually the same VM, Windows Server 2016. You can view it here. This allows you to collapse and like give you more screen room. I believe it all runs in HTML5. There's no plugins needed for it. It doesn't give any weird errors. I did all this using Google Chrome. Uh, so you're able to get in here and control Windows uh, pretty easily or use the console on the, uh, if it's a Linux VM. And this is where Zen Orchestra starts separating itself from the XCP Zen Center. So the Zen Center is nice, but this is where the scripting comes in and where some of the automation tools come in is first in the jobs. You can create different jobs that control the Excel Server API. Uh, and we'll show you here, for example, uh, VM host storage, VM migrate. You can set up a job based on a time basis on a regular schedule to move a VM one way, move a VM the other way, uh, start it, stop it, and script all of it all through here and a scheduling system. It's very much like cron scheduling, uh, all done nice to a web interface. So this is, this is pretty handy, and it's like I said, it's also where this starts to separate itself and have more features than you're going to get with your XCPNG center. Next one here is just the looking at the jobs. You can do things like host install patches as a job. Um, maybe you don't want to auto install it. Maybe you do want to install it, but then restart it later. Once again, the jobs feature gives you that extended functionality to automate tasks that maybe you have to do on a regular basis on here. Now, this is another thing is the backup NG. This is a feature I really like. So they have Backup and Backup NG. Backup is the original backup they wrote, and they still support it. Um, so as you update Zen Server, if you still have something custom in their original backup, you can, or you can bring those backups into the Backup NG, uh, which is the new design of the backup server. And I, it works really, really well. It's what I've been using uh, to backup all of our VMs. Now, what's really nice about the way they design this is it does not use any weird storage formats. You can restore them because they're XVA files, so they can just be re-imported into any Zen server without Zen Orchestra. You can actually just run an input. Now, it does have a backup and restore option we'll cover, but it's not using any weird formats, proprietary, strange storage. It's just creating XVA files and a really nice front end for doing it. Now, the first thing you do is you have to set up a remote file system for it. Because Zen Orchestra is running as a VM, unless you made that VM really big, um, and it may not be the most practical way to do it, but you could back up to itself, um, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you could take the other VMs and stick them inside of the Zen Orchestra VM by using the local storage that it has, but like I said, that's probably not a great idea. You can then other storage systems that it has access to via the same network interface. Um, you can add like an NFS storage or a Samba storage. So if you have a a uh, NAS box attached to it or a NFS uh, file system. We use FreeNAS, so we can attach it via NFS. It allows it to mount that FreeNAS because it has storage access to it, and then it backs up the VM off of the Zen server and onto one of our FreeNASs that's not attached to the Zen server just for backups. Uh, so it's where you set up the file system remotes, but you could even attach it to a Windows server uh, that you have in, to be a Samba. It's got that as an option as well. Next, we have the different backups. You can just do rolling snapshots, backup, delta backup, disaster recovery, continuous replication. Now, the other nice thing is it supports more than one backup destination. So you can add as many different places as you want. So if you have four or five different places that you want to back up to all at the same time, it will do that and simultaneously do the backup. Pull the VM off, create the XV files, and put them all the places you said to land it. So I chose two here just for this demo, but it's 
you know, definitely kind of an option if you wanted to make sure you put the backups in more than one place. This is a convenient way to do that. Now, what do the backup files look like? Let's actually talk about that. So this is what it looks like when we do an XOVM backup. These are UUIDs of each of the VMs. So it just saves the UUID out. Easy enough to get a, a, a list of all the UUIDs for each VM, there you can view them inside a Zen server. You can look at them in the Zen Center software. You can do it from the command line, and then it creates under the UUID the XVA file. So we have two backups uh, that we do um, every week. We keep the previous weeks and this week's backups. So there's always two XVA files, and like I said, they're just pretty straightforward. I can just import once I know what this VM is. Just re-import it, and if I do import it without knowing what it is, it'll give it the proper name and take care of that because it's embedded in the file. And if we look at the JSON file that it creates, the, it, Zen Orchestra uses a JSON file in order to understand all the backup parameters and all the details of that particular backup. That's where it's storing all that metadata. Very easy readable, no weird proprietary format. And I can tell by looking at JSON file, if I look right here, this is a free PBX. So full backups or incremental backups, both are supported. Uh, just so you know, when you do full backup, it creates a full XVA file. Our weekly backups, we do a full XVA, um, but during the week, you may not want to dump all those data to it. So you can do incrementals and sync on the deltas. That is an option. And it just kind of has an explainer. And I can, this is all on the Zen Orchestra site. If you go through there, go through their backup. They have lots of cool explainers on how the backups work for the way it merges the blocks back for rolling backups versus the incremental backups where it only keeps the last one. Now the other option, and this is something we're using, uh, is continuous replication. And continuous replication is backup, but not to an XVA file, but, but to another storage device. So we have our FreeNAS and we have uh, the other FreeNAS box called Dozer, but these are storage pools, not target files. So it's not targeting like a, a NAS box, it is targeting an, an existing one. You can even include the local storage of a device. So if you have two separate uh, Zen servers, you can replicate to the storage pool on each of each other's servers. So what it does, it creates the entire VM with all the metadata, but in a non-running state. And when you do it as continuous replication, it does differentials. So the we have it running in our system every half an hour, we back up the VM to a local storage. That way, if our main shared storage ever went down, we can quickly spin up our, our three critical VMs no problem at all. So without having to deal with high availability or having more servers that we don't really need for that because, well, we're a tech shop and if a server stopped, we look at why it stopped and could always just restart the uh, continuous replicated one and it would only be a half hour old. It takes only seconds to do because it's only doing the differential changes uh, between that. So it's a really nice feature that they have this built in and they have a whole explainer on how it works. And I think I've covered the Zen Orchestra backup system uh, in depth in another video. Now this is what the restore looks like. So it recognizes um, the restore, the date I did the backup, uh, where it's located, which storage it's on, and I can just hit restore. Now these are part of the full disaster recovery backups. And this is nice because I can quickly drop it somewhere or anywhere else. So it wants to know what server it was on. It doesn't have to go back to the server it came from. It can go back on another one. It can start the VM. Uh, the restore is really easy to do. We've tested it and used it. Matter of fact, I test it kind of regular. Um, after we do a backup, I'll grab at least one random VM because no backup is a backup unless it's been verified. Uh, so we'll grab one and just restore it real quick. We'll shut it down after the backup, restore it, and okay, great, works fine, we're good, we know the backups work, we know the files are being backed up properly and can be restored because finding out you can't restore something is a pain. They make it really easy because you can just start it on another server. Importing them. So Zen supports um, XVA and OVA files, XVA being the native Zen format, but OVA being open virtualization format. So both these are supported in Zen server and you can export um, everything from snapshots to uh, all the different formats as an XVA file. I don't know where OVA, I think you can export OVA file via the Zen Center software, uh, but then you can also import them back in here. So if you just have those files, like I had showed you and you copied them to something and something terrible happens, like an entire disaster in the data center, but you have a external, you copied it to a external drive, which is something we do with ours. You can just grab these XVA files and import them here. They can be done from the command line or they can literally just be pulled in and dropped back in as and restored as VMs. Now creating VMs on here is this part is pretty much the same as you've seen in Zen Center, um, but it goes a step further. 
if you go down to the advanced, this is where you can kind of uh, boot VM after creation, auto power on, change all these little options, but then we have a multiple VM pattern. So with a name pattern here, percent, first index one, last one six, and it will create six of these VMs, either off templates or as you've seen up there, just like on the XCPNG Center, you can do it off of a, uh, a template or an ISO on there, and it'll boot all these and send them all into uh, working. So it's, it's pretty cool that they got this built in. So it allows you, if you need to deploy like 20 VMs at once, and I've done this for some load testing projects, uh, just real quick, you just type in one, type in 20, it would deploy 20 VMs. Uh, that turn them on, and as long as the server can handle it, it'll turn them all on. Oh, that was it for XCPNG. Uh, check it out at XCPNG.org. They have forums on there. I'll read through the forums. If you're looking at this product, you can just kind of look at the responses, and you'll see that there's a lot of people using it. There's a lot of great support, a lot of people uh, sharing ideas on there. And, of course, the development's all open source. So you can go over to GitHub and check out all the development and what's going on there. I've been really happy with the project. Uh, they have... Uh, not let me down. The bugs have been really minimal. Um, if any, it, it, it's been nothing I would worry about running in production. So yes, we're using this in production for both us and our clients and many other people at much larger scales than I run this at uh, have been using it. It's a great product and uh, I'm looking forward to all the new developments. Their roadmap is uh, looking really bright. Um, this is November 2018, so everything I said is relevant as of now. But of course, with future versions, there'll be even more features to talk about. Maybe I'll update this slides. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.